So I owe you all an update on the Book of Silvered Leaves. Uh, this is a project that I've been working on for about four months. Uh, it's definitely not as long as the other more famous book, uh, which is known as Liber Loga, which uh, is more technically and properly known as Amzesnages as Harde, which is the Enochian for let those who are worthy, that let those who fear God and are worthy read. So this book is uh, slightly different, but also has some parallels to Liber Loga, and I'll get to those in a second. But uh, the most uh, obvious parallel is that you are supposed to make it. <laughs> well, yeah, no kidding, Cliff. Um, so, okay, so what goes into making this book? So uh, John Dee and Edward Kelly, who are the uh, receivers of the Enochian system, they were told that they needed to make a book of 48 pages and they needed to bind it, bind it, those pages that were all supposed to be seven inches by eight inches into a book and that they were to shut the book away and those leaves were all to bear silver. So um, they were supposed to put the book away into a, in a room for two weeks. So, and then they were also told that uh, man is not um, worthy to write what is to be, what is in the book. Okay. So, okay. So that's interesting. And what I did was uh, just, again, recapping what I probably have said in other videos, but so I wound up um, gluing some silver leaf to the book and uh, on each of those, um, on, on each of the pages, and I did it front and back. And then what I did is I actually used a scrapbook to put all of the leaves um, in there. So I did all of that. And then, uh, as the instructions say, I went ahead and put the book here in the uh, in a room, and I left the um, the book there for two weeks. And luckily, I'm just in a position where I had both room and was able to keep the door closed. It says, you know, shut the door, or close the door, something like that. I forget the exact instructions, but keep it closed for two weeks. So don't go in there, right? It's part of the sanctification process, or at least more, more precisely, what the angels told you to do <laughs> or told, uh, told Dee and Kelly to do and what I wound up following. So all of this is to say that... Um, it was, so I did all of that. I put the, um, the leaves inside the scrapbook and technically those are now bound. Um, so having done that and, you know, I mean, they're not going anywhere. That's all that binding means. So you do something so that it cannot move or cannot be taken out or whatever the case may be. It's all one thing. So I shut the door for two weeks. Nobody went in there. And at the end of two, and that, by the way, that was distressing to the cats. So be advised, if you have cats, they may be very interested. But what I could, what I noticed was, is that as those two weeks went along, I could feel more and more energy sort of expanding out of the room. And I could, I got a, an energetic sense of what was going on. So having done all of that, I then came into the room. And then there was the question of, well, okay, so it, the angel Mapsama, who transmitted this book to Dee and Kelly and said, okay, you need to make this book. In addition to the other book, Libra Loga, aka Amzes Nageses Harda, which means let those who fear God uh, and are worthy read. And in addition to that book, they needed to make this other book. So they needed to make two books, technically three. There's a third one that I have yet to make, and I'm not sure when or how I'll go about that, but it's coming up. So, okay. So you're supposed to make this book, bind it, and then um, from there, uh, you know, leave it in the room for two weeks and then come out. And the angel Mapsama told Dean Kelly that uh, man is not worthy to read what is to write what is written in the what what is you know write in the book basically. So okay, part of the magician side of me said, hmm, what does that mean? So. It could go one of two ways, right? It could be that at the end of two weeks, 
the angels write whatever is supposed to be written in the book, and that's it. It's over. Uh, that did not happen, or at least not directly. Uh, the other thing, possibility, was that it was more of an idea of sanctification, right? You need to make yourself worthy, because right now, you know, without God's intervention or the angelic intervention, or both, um, you will not be worthy to write in it. So you need to do these things to keep it holy, putting it away for two weeks, um, ideally being a good person, trying not to, you know, you know, commit, you know, immoral acts, that sort of thing. Um, so, so all of that went down. I did all of that. And what happened was, and then, and then at the end of that, then, then you would be worthy to write in the book because you wouldn't just be an ordinary person. You would be more angelified or, you know, consecrated, you know, made, made more holy, you know, you've been sanctified. So the other thing I was thinking about is that it might, um, you might be able to see in the silver, the, uh, whatever it is you're supposed to write. So when I got to the end of the Abramelin ordeal, or more, pre more precisely, the, the rituals altogether that I did, and it was 18 months. So in that sense, it was technically Abramelin. Um, but not, obviously, you can't just say I spent 18 months doing stuff, but I did, I did a lot. Anyway, when the, the whole idea at the end of the book, I used the Dane translation, the recent one, that um, you're supposed to, that's D-E-H-N, by the way, um, you're supposed to have some silver handy and then look into the silver. So I got just a very small, or actually, I think I used my wife's uh, silver that she had handed down. It's it's not much, so please don't, you know, please don't ask for it for free or whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, so I looked into that and it was, you know, when I could feel the HGA coming on, I looked into it and I could see it. And it wasn't like your typical, well, I see something when I look like when I'm scrying, maybe into a black obsidian mirror or into a, a bowl of water or anything like that. I could see this as strongly as if somebody had like taken a picture and you close your eyes and you see that afterburn on your retinas. So all of this is to say that... Um, I figured that would happen here, right? Silver, silver, you're going to be seeing something and maybe that will be it. Maybe that's what this whole process is. And okay, so I get in the room and I'm supposed to call, you're supposed to call forth the angels, et cetera, et cetera. Um, call upon the holy names of God. At first I was doing John D's um, Latin prayer, um, you know, where he calls on the... Um, Watchtower God name, so Oro I Baalus P, etc. And I did all of that. Um, then I just wound up doing an English translation of that, and I wouldn't always necessarily do that. What Mopsama directed Dee and Kelly to do was to have a feast. Well, we are talking about, you know, uh, you know, supernatural beings. Well, what would they feast upon? So generally the calls have their own energy and I have also, you know, done some energy work. So what I would do is I would call forth some energy in a spiral and, you know, I would either do that or I would make the calls every time I would make the calls. But if I felt like they needed more of an invitation, I would like try to, um, you know, will some energy to come down from heaven so that they could be so that the table would be pleasing to them. And it would be a good target. So, or tables, technically, because I have a, a zodiacal table, for those of you who have been following the channel. So, all right. So, let's get to, to the brass tacks clip. So, what uh, happened? Well, let me go ahead and pause here and turn the camera around and you'll see what's okay, going on. Okay, so for a lot of this, the next part of the video... I'm going to just sort of discuss the overall structure of the Book of Leaves as it was transmitted to me. Um, clearly, you know, there's little inventions like <laughs> tape that I used, but I wanted to keep it bound, bound. And the angels, you know, didn't, they didn't have tape back then, and so they didn't want to confuse Dean Kelly with that. Or if they did have tape, you know, that's news to me. Um, Okay, so what did the structure wind up being? So you can see here how I did it. You can see the silver. And the angels said, always have the silver on the outside. So I did that. Um, you know, nothing 
too huge about that. And at times what would happen is I would be able to look in the silver and I could see something. I could see something approaching what it was I was supposed to do. And, and you know, was it as, was it like an afterburn on the, um, on my retinas? No. But what I saw here, and by the way, this is underneath it. I have the book of Libra Loga that you might've seen me make earlier and talk about. But because this book, I don't, I couldn't find any resources. I figured somebody may find this of interest. So as you can see here, hang on, I'm going to let my cat in. She may make an appearance because she's a cat and she is the one who gets whatever she wants. There she is. There is my cat. Yes, you're a good girl. Okay. This is real life, folks, and I'm not editing this out. So anyway, um, the, yeah, I know you got stuff to say, but I'm talking to people too. You just chill out. Okay, so you can see silver in the corner. So let's talk about the basic structure of what uh, I would see. So I would see um, either images or I would be, th th there were different s forms of communication. I would either see something in silver or I would be told what to draw. And I would also, also before this, I was told that in uh, this version of the Book of Silver Leaves, and by the way, I think everybody's going to have their own version probably. So don't expect yours to turn out exactly like this and do not feel like this is prescriptive. Like you need to make this. You need to make whatever the angels tell you to make. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So, but the angel said, you know, it's these first 19 pages. We're going to have the 21 letters of the Enochian alphabet. So, um, it's interesting that this is a parallel to Libra Loga. Let me find that actually to one of the leaves. Hang on, uh, I want to say it was here, <laughs> pretty quick, right? So here we have a 21 by 21 um, square, and here we have a 19 by 19 square. All of these are like bolded or actually I think they're capital letters in the um, original uh, D diaries. So just, you know, huge. And of course, this is Libra Loga, so the entire thing is huge. But even so, within that, you get a 19 by 19 and a 21 by 21 square. So, so this book sort of did the same thing. And it said, uh, the angel said, okay, you know, you're going to have the, this was even before I was writing it, but the angel said, you're going to um, have the 19 letters of the alphabet, you know, in this. And they mentioned that um, the, eventually when it came time to writing it, they said, Okay, the first one is going to be Gizk, because the first shall be last, last shall be first. But then they paired it with the first, which is the letter Pa, which you can probably see better if I turn it here. So this little thing, that little half circle here, and then this V is basically the letter Pa, the, the half right half circle of this whole circle. If you take that whole thing, follow that down and trace that out, you I mean you can look at the letter B for Enochian online or Pa, and you'll see this very thing. Okay, so they said the, that two letters were going to be paired up, P and, uh, B and T, which is to say Ba and Gizg, and then the letters um, Pal and Gur, which is to say X and Q, because they're used, I'm assuming, because they're used very little. So, okay, so you see here some images. Uh, I ran this by my friend Cody P, and his website is unslop.com. And he said that uh, these images were sort of of a higher octave than I should be able to get <laughs> coming through wherever. So, um, you know, he's definitely extraordinarily gifted. And one of the ways he's gifted, extraordinarily gifted, is with the site. But um, so, yeah, so that's what, these are just some example images, right? And here you can see the letter Kef. And here you can see the letter Van. But you see that there's extra stuff going on. So even though the letters are here, they're not always showing up the same way. Here you can see kind of outlines. And um, let me find another one here. Here you have the letter Don, which is the letter R. Um, and sometimes they would just show up straight like this. I'm trying to find an example where they don't, where the letter doesn't. Sometimes there were outlines. I want to say that occasionally. This, by the way, is the seal. I was told this is the seal for the angel Mapsama. So you can kind of see, you know, uh, vaguely letter S if you, you were go, to go like this. And you can see, obviously, letter M, letter A. 
Um, this is almost, you know, like the letter P, but regardless, that's the seal for a Mopsama. Okay, just a couple more things. So that's the letter L. Occasionally I would get an additional message. This is just Jesus Christ in Latin. Um, and so on and so forth. I think that Gur and Paul, and this is Enochian, I think Gur and Paul were unique in that. Um, so you can see here the letter Graf showing up three or three or four times, five times, I guess. That's the letter Un. You can see you get some Egyptian imagery here. The letter Or, which is the Enochian letter F. I'm trying to find that one. This one was pretty beautiful, I thought. I'm not much of an artist, but um, sometimes, you know, through grace stuff can come through. It's the letter, uh, I think I already had Drew, so this is probably Ur, but it's, well, at any rate. Um, I could go through and try to analyze all of these. That's the letter Jed, so on and so forth. I'm trying to find Gur and Paul. I know it's one of these. Otherwise, why would I say it? Um, maybe it was this one. No, it wasn't this one. Hang on. Sort of towards the middle, maybe. Okay, so the, yeah, that's Drukes, the letter N. Oh, here it is, right? So here, you know, there's actually multiple ways, right? So you could go like this to get the Enochian letter Gert, or you could go like this. It is interesting. It kind of looks like a squarish Mickey Mouse uh, symbol. But, and then, yeah, there's Paul. So they weren't always, they didn't always have like this outline formation, but a lot of times they did. Okay, so those were the first 19 leaves. And I'm going to keep that, you know, me just going on the fly so you can take a look at the symbols as long as you want, pause it, whatever. Um, okay, so from there, and here you can see like another representation of the aethers, just sort of reiterating. A lot of reiteration, okay? So then we get to the next leaves, and these leaves were all just, I was just told, right out, you know, this, what you're hearing, or what you're seeing in the silver, and what I would hear is, I would either hear the English version of the word, or the Enochian letter of the word, and it depended on if I knew right away what the word meant um, in Enochian, uh, believe it or not, I am not fluent in Enochian, I am not Castiel, uh, do not at me, um, so anyway, so these first two leaves had, um, you know, no markings on them whatsoever. But then you get to this leaf and you can see in the corner a moon symbol. Okay, that was interesting. So I got one, two, three, three of those moon symbols. And then you notice here, there's the moon symbol, but it switches. Okay, so I get one, two. So overall there were seven, if you count this. And by the way, um, <clears throat> if I place the moon symbol in the wrong spot, that's on me. This probably should have gone here, but the angels were satisfied. They didn't tell me to go back. Um, and then you see here a full circle, but to me this represented the full moon, okay? So then on top of that, uh, once I got through those, so here we have a total of nine, right? Because if you count these first two that don't have anything on them, well, those are like the new moon, and then these other crescent moons are representing, you know, I, I get that it's imbalanced in terms of, you know, uh, whether or not, you know, how many crescent moons waxing versus waning. I understand all that. I'm not uh, unaware of that. I'm not sure if there's a particular symbology to that. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just a guy. Okay. <laughs> so at any rate, um, but these are all uh, Enochian words. Occasionally, rarely, I did get um, a new Enochian word, but it didn't happen very often. Um, very rarely. Um, so I'll try to, if I remember, I'll try to put those up on the site. So then the next leaves, and it, it goes on the same side here. So this will be easier if I just sort of slowly show this. You can see what I'm doing here is I'm showing you that the next leaves were, uh, generally speaking, um, astrological symbols, okay? So you get Cancer, you get Leo, Virgo, all the way down, okay? 
And then once that was done, here's Pisces, which is the last, typically considered the last sign, depends on what system you use, but usually it's taught in modern times as the last sign. And then you notice we get to the planet Saturn. And also, instead of 49 words in each of these pages, all these pages up until this point have been 49 words. Uh, it was just seven, okay, seven words, which was a surprise and a relief to me that I didn't have to keep doing that. So you can see here, um, the angels said that following the Chaldean order was fine. So you see the slowest moving planet, Saturn, then Jupiter, then Mars, the sun, uh, uh, the moon, or uh, Mer uh, Venus, Mercury, and then finally the moon. Not the moon as a phase, but rather the astrological planet of the moon. And if you've been keeping track, so that's 19 of the first leaves, right? Uh, actually, let me just finish this off. So, um, and then finally, this one was for Earth, right? And you notice here that this is very similar to the uh, structure for um, the final page of Libra Loga, page, leaf 49, just to say, let me open this sucker up. Try not to open one that might be scary. It's very similar to this, okay? So you get the three by seven and then the three by seven, but on the back, okay? So I'm just gonna switch over here and then try to do a good edit. Okay, so uh, that's a lot. Uh, but the final, so if you've been keeping track, um, you have a pretty good balance there, right? You have 19 uh, initial leaves uh, that are include the 21 letters of the Enochian alphabet. And then you have uh, nine leaves that are all um, of the, uh, the phases of the moon. And by the way, if you add the trinity to that, then you get uh, nine times three is 27, and that's the number of lunar mansions that are also interpreted in astrology. Um, the next uh, 12 leaves... Are, so you have 28 now, nine, 9 plus 19 is 28. And by the way, also 28 is under a different calculation considered a, a, a another way that lunar mansions are calculated. It's like there's an extra one that's sort of parallel to another one. Um, but And, and that's considered extraordinarily um, ben, uh, benef beneficial to the whoever has it or during mundane matters, assuming everything else, you know, all, all things being equal. Um, my guess is that if the moon is out of bounds, it could be considered more of that lunar mansion, but I don't know. It depends. I'm, I'm not really as huge into Vedic astrology, not because I don't think it's good. It's because I haven't studied it yet. I'm too busy studying tropical, Western, modern, uh, and Hellenistic astrology. Um, but I will probably double back to Vedic. Okay. So anyway, back to the, back to arithmetic, the arithmetic. So you have 19 plus nine is 28, nine for those phases of the moon. Um, then you have 12, so that's 40, 12, one for each, one leaf for each of the uh, signs of the zodiac. And then the uh, seven astrological planets, so that's 47. So nine, 19 and nine is 28, plus 12 is 40, plus seven is 47. And then the last one, is it, I didn't draw the um, symbol for Earth on it, but it seems pretty obvious that that's sort of the the Earth-like, um, uh, the most Earth-like of the of the uh, forty-eight leaves. So all of them are closest to Earth. So what now? I'm sure when you're wondering, well, what about the content? What was written on those things, right? Well, like I said, I was looking up stuff in the dictionary and some of those I had words for. Some of those um, words were pretty, um, or the, those messages, those 49, uh, uh, the, or those um, however many, 12, uh, th those 21, I guess. Yeah, the Zodiac plus the... Um, the plus the nine phase nine for the phases of the moon so they were pretty um pretty personal i'm guessing by the way that there may be an imbalance due to um the way that my astrological chart plays out um, i noticed that i felt very compelled to put whatever leaf i was working on within tuck that within the book of libra loga 
and I'll get to the reason why in a se why in a second. But Liber Loga has always struck me as very solar, and this book of silver leaves was very um, very lunar. Okay, so why do I say that? Well, silver corresponds with the moon, and also it just so happens that I bought a pretty you know dark uh, cover. Um, I was also given a title title. I, I wrote it upside down because you know. I'm me, I make mistakes, I'm human. Uh, always accept your and reflect on your humanity during this process, right? So, um, angels didn't say you couldn't write down the title twice, so, but the title is uh, Pro Noah, and I did it from left to right just as the angels required uh, the um, Book of Libra Loga. Uh, in fact, I even think of all the things I screwed up, that was one of them. <laughs> I'm supposed to write, oh well, <laughs> I'm not, I'm a, I'm a human being. So maybe it was supposed to be more powerful. But anyway, this time I got it right. And it me it's uh, called Pro Noa uh, Pibliar uh, Chaosco. Or Chaosco. So um, Pro Noa is the, uh, is a, a neo Enochian word. It's not something that's in the original diaries, but it's one, something that came to me when I originally went through the Aethers. This is our other cat, by the way. Hello, Cordelia. You're a good girl. Come here. Yeah, good girl. So, um, this is what you get. This is real life, folks. This is real life, right here. Man and his cat. Good girl. Um, so the sense that I got was that this is very lunar. So they gave me the title at the end. I had one extra uh, silver leaf that I put on the front. So, okay. So the messages, getting back to those. <laughs> I knew I was going somewhere. Uh, the messages uh, from those leaves that had Enochian writing on them, very much a lot of praise of God, a lot of um, sometimes a personal message toward me saying such and such will happen, um, you know, more or less accurate. I think the, um, I think at one point, for example, they said that it would be 52 days to getting it done, but it, it actually took longer. But I think, it, I think what it took was uh, 52 days of, um, of effort on it. Yes, you're a good girl. Come here. So then what I noticed is the, she's going to keep meowing. Um, but there were mainly, it was like messages fairly positive. And I don't know if that's just because I'm a positive person or if I've got, you know, Jupiter in the first, that makes me optimistic and and all of that, but um, really, I'm not, I don't want to say that this is the definitive thing and this is how it will be um, when you do it or if you do it. Instead, I can just say, this is my experience, right? That's all I can ever speak to. Anyone can ever speak to their experience, maybe what they've read that informs or informed their experience. Um, but yeah, so I can't I can't say for sure what this ought to be for you. I can only do it for myself. Actually, I think just coming back to it, I think it was actually supposed to be the final leaf of um in Libra Loga. I think it was supposed to be a final leaf that was written from left to right. So that's how I did it um on uh on the final leaf there. So maybe I screwed up the title. I don't know. Like I say, I'm human. Um yeah, so then the next, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering now, well, okay, that's great. After all of that, how is this important? You know, why should I do it? Should I do it? Should I, should I even bother with this? Well, what I would say is, if you've gotten your feet wet with the Aethers, and you have, um, you know, basically more or less got a decent start on your furniture, then sure. It's relatively cheap to produce. Um, I got some uh, paper that I already had. I did use, you know, quote unquote, virgin paper, untouched paper um, that I, uh, it was actually, and then, I, and then what I got is I fit those into eight an eight by eight scrapbook and I just taped off the, the extra inch on the ends. Um, so, so why do I say that it's worth your while? Well, 
The reason why is that I believe that this is sort of a lunar counterpart to the more solar Libra Loga, and you can even just tell just by looking at Libra Loga, oh, you know, this has gold on the front amidst, amidst a light blue ba backdrop. Well, the other thing that we ha see and that we have every single day like that, assuming it's not too cloudy, is the sky with the sun in it, right? Uh, so that's clearly very solar. I could go into some of the reasons why, but the, the most obvious one is that the Prince Bornogo appears uh, on leaf nine of the book of Libra Loga in a very prominent way, a very central way. Um, and it is actually part of a circular uh, diagram uh, from which his name from the very center uh, emanates out. So very much a solar thing. Um, but whereas this one, you know, you have silver, I, you know, not trying to pick anything in particular, but being guided, um, it was, uh, I wound up with a very dark blue cover, which is very much like the night sky. Um, what else? So I'll, I'll talk about the experience of writing this. With the book of Libra Loga, no problem knowing what to write. You know, occasionally towards the end, I got a little intuition, but it wasn't so much that, uh, that, that I was supposed to just follow my intuition. You're supposed to copy the whole thing and, or, and make a perfected copy by, cha by transliterating, transliterating the letters into Enochian and changing the order from uh, left to right to right to left. Um, so I did all of that. And this time, and by the way, the writing in the, in the book, the Enochian is from right to left, in case anybody ever finds this hundred years from now doubtful. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but so what was interesting, though, is that obviously I, I didn't have a template. It d I didn't have, okay, copy these letters down. Instead, I got messages and it was much more intuitive. And uh, when I meant, I meant, I'll mention Cody again, he said that, yeah, I think it's actually probably a good idea that you more of your intuition is involved with this. Um, so I went ahead and, you know, just tried to listen to what I heard, tried to you know, basically kind of scry into using the silver, um, but it was never that heavy. Uh, a little bit about how I approached this um, from a ritualistic perspective, because uh, obviously I didn't just sit down and start writing. I would definitely activate all the furniture. That would be the table, the laman, the SDA. I also happen to have a zodiacal, oh, and uh, the round tablet of Nelvaj. Uh, I would also activate a, the zodiacal counterparts to the Holy Table in Laman, just, you know, just as a matter of course. I would also um, make the call to, uh, calls one and two, and I would also uh, read lines 21 through 26 from that first leaf of Libra Loga, that first, uh, the front half of that first leaf of Libra Loga which is, according to Aaron Leach, it's the way you call forth, um, you know, you make an invitation to good angels. And finally, uh, sometimes I would also uh, throw in a, um, throw in a call to the Aethers, usually the Aether of Lil. Um, so what else would I do? So obviously, unless you're kind of ready to do that. Maybe maybe not just dabbling in the Aethers, but maybe call the highest Aether that you can. Um, but the main thing I would say about this book is just don't necessarily try to rush it. And the angels actually were quite explicit. They say, no, you need to, you know, rest and take, attend to yourself before you do this. And that's also very much a lunar quality, right? Nourishing and self-nourishing and stuff like that. So, so I would do that, and then I would go into vision. Uh, the last day, or, or close to the end, rather, um, I was I, I got this intuition that I should scry the uh, word pronoa, which is translates to like an alchemical love. So the full title of the book. This is this is why I make you read that. Watch the whole video, right? You don't get the meaning of the title till the end. <laughs> um, the whole title of the book is. Uh, the loving uh, places of comfort uh, uh, of the earth, right? So in other words, it's very, you know, again, go, using this sort of interpretation of the moon being not only the fastest planet, but we also know that uh, it's the closest one. Uh, you know, it actually affects the earth quite directly with the tides um, uh, of it, from its gravitational pull. So... Um, 
that also sort of adds to the theory that this is a uh, much more of a lunar book. So, so yeah, so towards the end, I was told to scry the aether, the, scry pronoa using the call to the aethers. This is a te technique that's not new to me. Um, other people have done that for this and the other thing, and they're trying different things. So now keeping in mind that this is um, a relatively neo enochian word, uh, I'm going to put it pretty strongly in the camp of just try <laughs> using this, okay? So why do I say this? Well, when I scribed the Aether of Pronoa, it, it actually was the strongest I have ever had a reaction to using the, to making the call to the Aethers. I actually had to do it twice, but the second time it was like a deluge. So I went ahead and did that, and it was like if you've ever if you've ever made a call to the Aethers or had you know been in the presence and had an experience, blah blah blah. That it's always wonderful, and the more attuned you get to the system, it's great. You know, you have more experiences. And you have a vision, and it's very detailed, and you go from this part to that part. Making this call was as if I had scried every single word possible or idea possible at once. <laughs> Which is like, what? Um, so when I did that, I, I got all these visions. It was very intense. And I was told to just relax into it, and because I had to. There, there was the only choice I had at the point. It was either like cut off the vision or whatever. So I did that, and I had this vision of myself on this. It was very pale. It was almost like this white ocean uh, that was a, a sphere. So it was like, if you can imagine a planet that's only water, for example. Um, so anyway, I was lying very still in that. And that was when I got the first sense that, okay, there's something here as far as like, um, I'm not sure, quite sure how to describe it. Calming yourself, um, learning how to listen to your heart very closely, um, things like that. So I, when I did that, I was then told, okay, at the very end of this whole making the book, that's when... Um, you're supposed to make that call again and also have um, the initiation or the beginning or you're receiving, realizing the rainbow body. So right now I am experiencing a bit of that. When I say a bit of that, it's a very nascent feeling, but it's like I am moving my emotions around my physical space um, in a way that, uh, in an energ energetic way, and trying to be true to all of them, such as they arise. Uh, not necessarily trying to change it, but also getting a better sense of what they are. Stuff that you can't like, like go of completely. Um, which is not to say that you should that you should act on them all of the time, or you shouldn't try to take in charge of your emotional health. But this is like fundamental, like you know, this five or six um, very basic human emotions, fundamental human emotions. So anyway, I'm sending those about my physical space, body, energy, body, what have you, um, as I can and as I think of it. And that's helping to develop the, um, you know, I'm, I'm imagining that happening in a colorful way. So that's very nascent. So, but in so doing, I can already tell, okay, I'm supposed to follow this practice, you know, always eat your vegetables, but, you know, do that. And then what you'll find is that, um, it's like you'll get closer and closer to actualizing um, the rainbow body. And it's already there, just in a very, in a sense that it is much closer to me on the astral than it was before. Cody PM, this is the third shout out he's getting. He said that um, when I was doing Libra Uloga initially, that the sense of doing that, perfecting it, you know, and, and everything else, um, that builds out a rainbow body. And the sense that I, it, but on the astral and this, the sense that I got doing this book of silvered leaves is that it, it, it will start creating direct connections to that. And when that's done, um, that's when it can be more actualized. So when that process is going forward, you know, that, so, so when, when you make that connection to that rainbow body, then all of a sudden you can, you get a much more direct experience of that. So Clearly, you know, this is the easier of the two books to do. I I would say, yeah, go for it. It's cheap, not too expensive. 
Um, it's definitely not holy table expensive. Uh, so yeah, I would add this to the list of cheap things you can do. Um, you can make an SDA, Sigillum de Ameth. You can carve that out for about $25, depending on if you already have a tin, baking tin um, that fits that. Uh, same thing for the mini SDAs that you can also make. Same thing for the round tablet of Nalvaj. All of those are even le cost even less. Um, but this is this, along with Libre Loga, actually they're relatively inexpensive to make. You don't need to have um, an actual silver ring. You might be able to use gold. Eventually, I would say upgrade to gold or gold plated, um, if you can, if it's in your means, or maybe somebody can get that for you as a present someday. I don't know. Um, but all of that is to say that this, uh, some of these things are actually pretty cheap, you know, they're doable and workable. So you just have to be willing to put in the investment and, uh, what greater way to, you know, show you're serious about, uh, these matters than to actually do the things that they tell you to do. That's just a little aside and a little, uh, editorial comment. So anyway, uh, that's it for this. I'm going to try to, uh, edit this together. And um, if you have any questions, of course, you can always uh, ask me in the comments. I try to reply pretty quickly. Life's been a little crazy for me right now. Isn't it always for any of us, but I do try to uh, get back pretty quickly. All right. Love you all. Bye.